We are learning a lot from studying the genome about all sorts of human traits, including traits that affect personality, which if you've met identical twins, uh, you will see that there are some hereditary factors here because identical twins who have exactly the same DNA uh, do tend to have certain personality traits in common. It's not perfect though. If you get to know identical twins very well, you'll quickly see that they're not identical people at all. They have different preferences, different behaviors, but there are similarities that at times are fairly striking. So that must mean that DNA is involved in a certain way and we will work that out in the course of the next few years in terms of identifying specific hereditary influences on certain aspects of personality, including novelty seeking and the tendency to be either anxious or relaxed, and maybe even the tendency towards criminal behavior. It's possible that that's in there too. It will be very weak in its contribution, but will it inspire an enterprising lawyer uh, looking for a chance to get the client off who had robbed the local store uh, to say, ah, oh, it's not my client's fault. His DNA made him do it. See, here's the result of the genetic test. He has a higher than average risk of this kind of bad behavior on the basis of what you see here in this report. How will judges and juries deal with that? We actually had a recent conference with a bunch of judges to talk about this. I think the bottom line is that these influences are going to be so subtle and that they do not eliminate human free will that they really don't belong in the courtroom as an excuse uh, for behavior. And the best case I can make for that is the following. About half the people uh, on the planet have a particular predisposition to criminal behavior that makes them about 20 times more likely than the other half uh, to end up in trouble with the law and to end up being incarcerated in prison. Who are those people? Those are the males. That is probably the strongest of all of the influences we will ever discover in terms of a predisposition to violent behavior. And I've not heard it used in a court case as an excuse for robbing that corner store. And yet if you were gonna go there, probably just being a male would be the best defense you would have. We all think that's pretty ridiculous uh, hearing about it. Well, okay, what we're gonna discover next will be more ridiculous. So let's not go there. Seems that we still have the reality of choices. We all get to make them and we have to basically pay the consequences if our choices are those that are judged by society to have resulted in a criminal act.